All right, guys, in this video, I'm gonna walk you through the steps on how to add color. The last video, what we did, we separated the differences between light, medium, and dark, and we outlined our shape. So, this is everything that, that we did. Again, you didn't have to separate the difference between um, light, medium, and dark using any specific outline colors, but what I did is just separated it using these colors to show you, right? So, the red, the purple, the orange, that does not matter, as long as you separated the difference between light, medium, and dark. And now the next thing that you were supposed to do was to make sure that your shapes were closed. Remember, these are little pools. I'm gonna hide my photo here. I'll leave this back on, right? All your shapes right there were supposed to be closed, right? For example, this one right here, you can kind of see it's a little bit open right there. So with my direct selection tool, I'm gonna click on it and move that in, right? Make sure that you go around the, the whole thing and just make sure that all your stuff is refined, right? closed because again these are individual pools now to fill up a pool it has to be closed one of the things is we never looked at the edges so on this one we're going to look at the edges and then we're going to go into how to add color so i've hidden my photo and i'm also going to hide my window all right you see these sections right here if this purple section on this corner was a pool i can't actually lock it i can't close it right it's it can't be filled it has an opening on there so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make sure I'm on window. This is what we always do when we start off. Go to window, workspace, make sure Essentials Classic is selected. And if it's already clicked, just do reset, right? Reset Essential Classic. And then if it's not like your toolbar, if it's not two columns, just click on these two arrows right here and you'll have it as two columns. Now let's see, the fifth tool down we want to get the rectangle tool. And you might not see the rectangle tool, but if you click and hold it down, if you have any of these on there, you'll see you can click on the rectangle tool. What we're going to do, we're going to put a rectangle around our whole, oops, we're going to put a rectangle around our whole piece. And what that's going to do, it's going to close any of our pools that are on the corners. Basically, what we were doing with the, with the window itself, we're going to close off the sections around there. We didn't see it, like for example, this one right here, we didn't see that those were not closed because we had the window on there. Let me show you the window again, right? So the window comes up to there. What we need to do is actually bring our rectangle a little bit closer to it. It doesn't have to be exactly where the window is, but we're gonna bring it up to that section. So I'm gonna zoom in, maybe up to the top right here, click and drag, right? Maybe about there. And what that's gonna do, that's gonna close our sections right there. Let me see right here. Mm, this one right here and then um, for some of them like that one right there okay that's closed that's closed that's closed and it's okay if these go a little bit outside of that that's fine even if it goes a lot outside of that all right that looks good um, let me look at my window again this one actually stepped outside so I'm gonna move the rectangle on this side I'm gonna move it a little bit over to the edge right here I don't want it to show past my window I just want it to be very close to it. This one kind of shows right there. I'm gonna move that past over here. And then the bottom one, sure, I'm gonna move that up. All right. And there you go. Now my rectangle is where I want it to be. Now, the last thing I have to do with the direct selection tool, I'm still gonna have a few things that are close to it, but not there. Like this one right here, click, pull this one down, that's fine. I'm just going around again, just making sure all my pools, yes, that's closed, yes, that's a closed pool. This one almost there, but now it is. This one I'm gonna move a little bit over, right there. This one was almost there, now it is. These are closed, these are closed. This one right here is now closed, that's closed. This one almost closed, ooh, wrong one. Gotta select that red one, move that over. Now I have all, there's one right there and one right there. Nope, red one, move it over. All right, now all of my shapes are actually closed, right? They're all pools that are closed. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do Command A to select all. And notice it's gonna select all in my illustration. Why? Because I have everything else locked. I have my window locked, I have my photo locked, I have my background locked, and I have my window not showing and my photo not showing, but everything else is locked except my illustration. Again, Command A like Apple. And then I go to the ninth tool on the left, right? You might see the Shape Builder tool. You might see the Live Paint Selection tool. 
but I need you to select the live paint bucket tool, right? The live paint bucket tool is similar like other tools on other applications, I guess, that say paint bucket. But the reason it's live is because it has one advantage to that, right? If I click on the photo layer to show it, it actually knows what color is behind it, right? Let me show you, like right now, you can see my colors are red outline, which is the stroke, and none for the fill, right? But if I hold option, you can see it changes from the live paint bucket to an eyedropper. An eyedropper, similar to, to an eyedropper that you put eye drops in, right? I could just click right here and select the color. So what you are to do is to actually eye drop any of the colors inside there that you see. And you should be looking for a color that represents that pool. So this pool right here, if I hold option, I could actually click right here and get that same green. I'm not gonna click right here and get the darker green, but I'm gonna hold option. I'm gonna click right here. And that color, after I let go of option, I could click and it fills it in. Again, you hold option, you click, make sure it's the color that you want your whole section to be colored in, let go, and then click again. Hold option, click, let go, click again. Hold option, click, let go, click again. Hold option, click, let go, click again. And this, you could do it fast, but you can't do it well fast. You have to actually go through and make intelligent decisions throughout to say, hey, I'm gonna click here as opposed to clicking over here. I'm gonna click over here instead of clicking there. Like you wanna click holding option on a section that represents the most of that pool. So I'm holding option, click, let go, click again. Ooh, I see something that happened. All right, I'm gonna teach you something in this process. I messed up something here. You see how there's a darker color here and a lighter color here? I messed up. And if you mess up, which is okay, right? You're learning. You wanna go back and click on the pen tool. I'm actually glad that, that this happened, but here, I'm gonna zoom in. And I wanna put a divider right here to divide the difference between this dark and this light. So I'm gonna click and drag, click and drag, right? I'm creating another line right here. Oops. Okay, I'm just gonna give it a weird stroke right here. And then I'm gonna go on the direct selection tool and close this shape right here. Now, if you look at it, it's a brand new line. And if you look at your illustration layer, you have the live paint that you've been working on, and now you have this brand new line that you just created. That's okay, if you mess up, you go back, you create the line, but this is what you have to do. Command A again, which is selecting my new line and my live paint, and then I go up to Object, Live Paint, Merge. What that's gonna do is gonna combine my new line and my old lines together. So option, I'm sorry, object up here, right? Live paint and merge. And take a look, now it's all live paint. So if I do this again, command A, and I go to my live paint bucket tool, which is right over here, I can hold option, click on this light green, click in there, yep. And now hold option, click, let go, click again, and now I have those two colors right there. I have my darker section and my lighter section. The idea is you go around your whole piece and you finish adding color to it, all right? I'm gonna create one more video, and I said one of three. I'm gonna create a fourth one because there's gonna be something at the end that I think you guys are gonna find interesting, but once you're done with everything, look, you hide your photo, you can hide your window. I would do Command A, click on the selection tool, click on the stroke, get rid of the stroke to none, and then you'll have your finished plant. I know this doesn't look good right now, yours is gonna be finished, but I'll show you what this looks like on the fourth one, all right? I hope this helps.